Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Pickering and welcome to the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. This season was all about the people's choice and thanks to your nominations, we've put together a list of 10 individuals who left you wanting to know more. Remember, the list is in no particular order, save for the final person who we will reveal as 2016's most fascinating person at Bermuda. What makes someone fascinating? This is the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. Sponsored by 1. Mod Blue Boutique and the Trades Women of Bermuda. Hosted by Lisa Pickering. Since 2008, Rebecca Falkenberry has enjoyed an exhaustive career in lead roles from London's West End to New York's Broadway musical scene, including the likes of High School Musical, Rock of Ages, and Spider-Man. Last year, Rebecca added writer, director, television series creator, and feature horror film actress to her resume. She shared some of the real-life horror stories on her journey to success and how it all began at the age of seven on the stage of City Hall's Earl Cameron Theater. The thing that I loved about the horror film is a lot of TV stuff is different from stage in the sense that it's a lot more subtle. The camera picks up everything you're doing. But with horror films, when you're being killed or you're killing someone or there's blood everywhere, you can't really be subtle with it. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't call for like, what's my camera angle and what are we picking up and like really focus. You just kind of have to go for it and be very broad uh, in an honest way. Um, and Dramatic. So I, yeah. So I enjoyed that aspect that you just kind of go big or go home on it. And then you've been writing, producing, directing. Yeah, and then I made a short film <laughs> on the other side of things. And so this year I really wanted to try and create my own opportunities because I found in those times when you may get stressed with the rejection and you think nothing's going as I want it to, I would always feel better if I somehow created my own thing. I wrote a short film and then I saved some money and I got a DP and great actors that I love and it was just a three-person film um, and shot it in one crazy day <laughs> outside in the park and I mean it was a learning curve as it is with everything but I'm really pleased with how it came out and the editing is taking a little longer than <laughs> I wanted it to but does. as it does because I mean I'm so nitpicky but I think everyone is you see all the flaws so, that other people yeah. don't see. Yeah. And I find I'm doing them because I wrote the script and directed it. I want to kind of redirect and do some script edits as I go, which a lot of people do, but I'm being very minuscule <laughs> with it. But I'll be very happy with the result, I think. So what caught your eye about the Groundhog Day role? Because now you're returning. You said that you didn't want to take another theater role until something popped out at you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, original stuff. There are maybe one or two roles of past musicals that I think I would really love to play that because for the most part I just want to originate and create my own thing because then you get in from the ground level and then keys are changed and songs to suit you, things are written particularly or dances are choreographed particularly for you um, and that's just exciting to be on in that first step of something. Now you had said in an interview that uh, before leaving Bermuda you hadn't ever been really affected by negativity or experienced negativity. Did I say that? You okay. did. You did. <laughs> you did say that. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. Yeah. So you okay. know, living in this bubble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you experienced the negativity. So do you actually read your reviews or if you do, how do you handle that negativity? Uh I don't read reviews. Um I tend to read them weeks or months after the fact. Groundhog Day will be the first time because it's an original show that it'll be the New York Times and the Post and everyone and that's you kind of have your opening night and then at midnight you're just googling and they're all coming out. But this will be the first Broadway show that will receive reviews that I've done. Um, and I will not look at them. <laughs> just because I think there's such a build-up and if it's great obviously that feels good but we latch onto that one negative exactly. thing. Nothing must beat being in front of an audience though. You must feed off their energy when you're actually on the stage as opposed to in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very different. And that was actually another reason that I wanted to do a bit more TV film for a while. Um, because I love being on stage, but I also have a bit of anxiety issues, <laughs> which I've had <laughs> since I was 16, 
and went to the doctor here because I was having difficulty breathing and they told me I had asthma, but I was actually having panic attacks. I would rather go on stage and pass out than have an anxiety attack and not go on stage. It's just the way I work. And I have gone on stage having panic attacks before. And it'll be really odd things that'll set them off. But I just kind of wanted a break from that pressure. Um, and there is something about film and TV where I thought, oh, this is so nice. Because, <laughs> I mean, you still want to do a good job, but people can call cut or there's not, once you're in a show and once it's going, you can't stop. I mean, I was in Spider-Man, which famously stopped many times because it needed to because of possibly dangerous situations. But the more I enjoy what I'm doing, and especially when it's new and original, then that lessens. And then you can really feed off the audience, but yeah, feeling like you can move people from stage and having it live, and then when a little mistake might happen, and then you have to cover it or fix it, and no one in the audience knows, and it's just, it's exciting that it could be different and new every day. Did you experience that the first time you walked out on stage at 7 at City Hall? Oh, I'm sure. I'm hamming it up. You see those, <laughs> those Andy videos? I've just, I mean, I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to act. I just thought, here I am, and it was just big. Like, I'm just screaming and I'm dancing. And it's so funny to watch. But I'm clearly loving it and enjoying the attention, I think. You make it seem very effortless in a way, um, the way that your career has gone. And as you said, people aren't seeing the callbacks you don't get or mm -hmm. the roles you don't get. So it's a lot of hard work and perseverance. Where does that come from? Um. Probably my parents somewhat instilling hard work in me um, and I have <laughs> the whole FOMO fear of missing out thing right. I don't have that at all oh really I, I don't, do, do you? <laughs> yeah <laughs> well I don't have it in the sense that I'm such a granny in the sense that like I don't drink a lot and I don't party a lot and because I always uh, just wanting to be a hundred percent for whatever audition or something comes my way but fear of missing potential that's a huge thing I have. And if I think that I could have done something and I just didn't try to do it, or I was too scared to do it, or I thought people might reject it, well, yeah, probably the first time you try something, you probably won't be good at it. When it's gotten really hard, there have been a couple times where I've thought, is there anything else I could do? Is there anything else that I love? And there's just not. This is. This is really what I do, but I have managed to broaden that to, I need to create, I need to, and I want to be performing, and that's kind of where I feel most at home, but I also really thrive on writing a script or directing something or just creating, I'm, I'm not gonna be on the other side of the table doing numbers and right. the math part of it, but creating characters and stories that just, if as long as I'm doing that, then I'm happy. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on BurnNews.com to find out who else made the list of the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016.